Hello, I am Gamer Vince, and this is going to be my review of Magnifico. Um, this is part of a series I'm doing on uh, just six six board games that I bought part of a humble bundle of board games, digital board games, and these are going to be my uh, reviews and impressions, maybe a little bit of a tutorial on how to play these games. Um, I started off with Talisman, which was sort of my favorite out of the six that I bought. Uh, because it sort of it, it rewarded playing it again and again, and it was kind of quaint and fun, and there was a decent amount of variety in it. And Magnifico is sort of my least favorite, <laughs> so I've decided to do my uh, least favorite now next. Um, part of the reason why this is my least favorite one is I feel like it's unfinished. It feels a little bit like a beta game in some ways. Um, and there's just a couple of problems I have with it. Like there's just a couple of things that I feel like should be part of the game. Like for instance, in order for my for me to do my videos, I usually turn down the sound in the game um, so that you can hear me more clearly as I speak over my microphone. You cannot adjust in-game music. Um, like I can turn on the music here, and I think that's going to be rather loud and obnoxious. You know, I have to yell over it, so we're going to turn that off. I think I'll leave the sound on, because there's a couple of sound effects, but not too many. Hopefully that won't be too distracting, uh, so we're going to return there. So it's just little things like that that just make me, just make the game feel unpolished. Another really big turnoff is, I feel like part of the point of having a digital copy of a board game is to play it with friends. Um... Like, if I just wanted to get some friends together and we could play this on my computer, I feel like that doesn't happen that often, but maybe online or something like that. I feel like that should be an option, um, at least. In Magnifico, it isn't. I have no idea why. You can see that here I can switch my profile around. I can do a couple of things about, you know, like, whatever my profile is. Here's single player. I feel like this is reserved for multiplayer, um, but it's not here. Like, there's no multiplayer tab here. Maybe they're trying to figure it out. Maybe it's going to get added later. I don't know, but it's not here right now. Um, this front splash page also illustrates, I think, quite well another big problem I have just with the feel of the game is that it feels almost schizophrenic. On the left hand here, you have Leonardo da Vinci um, looking quite serious, and it's quite a, it's actually quite nice. It's quite a, quite a good bit of artwork right there with, you know, like his hair and, uh, he's got like a couple of details in the face there, with the wrinkles. And I think that's, I think it's uh, very serious and this, this looks quite good. This is quite a nice piece of art. Um, and then on the other side, you have whatever this is, you know, it's supposed to be like cartoony and I guess he's supposed to be like, this is what your units look like in the game. Um, and notice that it lacks any kind of detail in the face. The tongue is kind of cartoonish. It, it looks ridiculous to me. So I feel like you can't have it both ways. You could go for either the more serious looking kind of thing, or you could go for, um, this kind of cartoonish look. And I really don't like that in the game that it's, it tries to do both. And I think it does neither one of them well because the, classes too much to the other one. All right, we're, we're, we're going to just play a game. It is kind of nice that you can have three games going at the same time. Why you would necessarily need that, I'm not sure. I feel like you'd finish a game. Maybe two, but three, I, I don't know. But, you know, features is nice. Uh, you do have several different maps. The maps aren't that different. That's that's another big problem I have with this game, is that every game you play of, of this kind of feels the same. Um, because even though these maps have like different territories, there's like nothing too different about each one of these maps. The territories are just laid out slightly differently. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play in Europe because that's sort of, I feel like that's the, that's the default one. The last time I played this, I played Germany, uh, which I think I like that map a little bit more, but Europe is the default one. So we're going to play that one. Um, and you can pick between three or four players. Again, this is part of the reason why every single game feels just about the same. You can do three or four players. We're going to do three players just to keep it brief. Um, they they did include a lot of difficulty levels of players, uh, which I find kind of baff, baffling. Um, you can play against really sort of quote unquote skilled players and. They are, they're not bad. I mean, I, I played one game very quickly against some of these guys, and they they do, I guess, play well. 
Um, I'm going to be playing against just like the two basic ones, the, the the two easiest ones to play against, just just to keep it sort of brief. Uh, against Lady Daniela and William Brown, just just to keep the just to keep the video brief. And I feel like I feel like this game, you're going to play it once or twice and then be kind of bored of it. So you're probably not going to get much beyond these guys anyway. Um, so obviously, I'm not a huge fan of this game. Um, it, it, to its credit, though, it does do some things well, um, and I'll be pointing those out once we get into the game. You can pick between like whether you want to do 30, 40, or 50 points. 30 points is a really short game. Um, I've only played 30 points and 50 points. I'm not exactly sure how 40 points picks in. And a 50-point game is also actually not that long. Um, it is definitely a longer game, and a lot of things can happen, but the game is going to end rather soon, kind of whether you want it to or not. I kind of feel like that should be able to go to even higher points. But 30 points, and you can do starting territories, either automatic and manual, and that makes almost no difference. I don't do automatic, I do manual, because I like you know to think about it for a minute. Um, and also, notice that it's counting down to start the game, which to me is baffling. <laughs> when you don't have multiplayer, why count down? I don't know. All right, so this is the map. There's a lot of... This game basically plays a lot like Risk in that you have armies on the map, but the point is to get victory points and not, like, control territories or wipe out your opponent, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I think for this game, I think we're going to be... I'm basically going to be playing the Russians. Yeah, we're going to start over here and sweep... and sweep eastward. Excuse me, westward. Um, and, yeah, that's going to be our strategy... And I think that'll work fine. So we've selected things, which, yeah, that actually that sound effect of the castle building is it's kind of annoying because you hear it again and again. Clank, 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 clank. Yeah, actually, the more I think about it, the more the more I'm convinced I'm going to turn the sounds off. Um, the sounds are the sounds are okay. The sound and music of this game is really okay. It's not that bad. Um, it could be worse. So you start off with these castles, and castles help are very e uh, uh, difficult to take, and um, and so that's you start off with a castle, and you also start off with I think seven seven troops, yeah, and you gain a troop per turn to start with. Um, so every turn begins with a bidding on Da Vinci's designs, um, like uh, and it costs a little bit extra to implement them. It's called activating them. But yeah, the, the, this is the different designs. If you want to know more about them, like this automaton, I believe counts as like a unit for every point of shield you have on on your um, on your castle. And this machine gun just increases damage of infantry. Um, yeah, I'd feel it hit by one infantry is doubled. Okay, so you basically double the attack of one infantryman, which you know is something. Uh, I'm usually I'm not a huge fan of these particular. Uh, one, so I'm just going to offer 10. Essentially what happens is, is that you offer, uh, it's a bidding thing, it's a bidding mechanic. Whoever bids the most becomes the Magnifico, which is worth two victory points regardless. Um, but yeah. Okay, and whoever gets the Magnifico gets a little bonus during their turn. Everything is sort of like 10 cheaper. All, a lot of their stuff that they do is is just cheaper. Um, and you notice that this guy here, uh, William Brown's kind of being a dick. He took a territory right next to me. Um, and I think I'm going to show off combat right off the bat here, just, just, just because I feel like it's a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I feel like both of these guys are just like, uh, screw you. We're going to take territories near you. Um, which, you know, that's fine. I'll just give me a chance to show off. How this game goes so during your turn basically what you can do is you can move units between your territories I only have one territory so that's not available you can construct things shield basically negates a hit every combat and you can build planes and tanks which are sort of da vinci designed tanks you can kind of see them down here what they what they look like and tanks are very powerful planes i don't see used very often and i don't particularly like them but that's fine um, so what we're going to do here is, yeah, I'm going to show you, like, combat right off the bat. Uh, before you do any combat, before you attack, you want to make sure that everything else you are doing is done. Like, once, once you've, uh, started combat, you are, 
you're done building. You can't build anymore. Um, and a big way to gain points in this game is by perfecting your cities. Um, which basically means you're investing shield into your cities. Um, and once it hits, I believe, five shields, it is becomes a perfected city and that's worth a victory point every turn. And that is a big way to get victory points is through perfected cities. The other ways to get victory points is to basically whoever has the most territory gains victory points, and I believe two victory points. I think it's two. I think most things, if if whoever's first has it gets two victory points. If there's a tie between like if there are two people tied for most, it's one point each. And if there's three people or more tied for it, then nobody gets it. Um, I'm gonna build a tank just to show you off. Uh, just to show off. Uh, how a tank works. Um, yeah, you cannot build infantry the way it goes is that you notice that there's basically two numbers on each one of these territories. There is like this infantry number, which is how many infantry this or this territory produces every turn. And then there's the uh, money number. It's called Florence, um, which is how much money you get every turn. Um, so yeah, we're going to attack so you're going to do this. We're we're going to invade like surrounding territories as well. But first we're going to first I'm going to show off this attack. Actually, first I'm going to do invade because so when you invade a region, it costs just 10 Florence, not very expensive at all. And you can kind of pick how much you invaded with. I usually just go with one guy. Um, and now see, now I have this territory. One guy went over there. It's very nice. And he, I'm going to invade this thing in the back here. Actually, before, yeah, so we're going to invade this thing in the back here. Um, and one thing you will notice is uh, how waterways work in this game. So I'm going to do attack. And I have a choice here. I can attack either here or I could attack Alborg. Um, and the way, and the reason why I can do that is because you can cross the, cross the waterways. Uh, like this is one waterway. This is one waterway. All of this is one waterway. So you could go all the way from like, you know, England over here and hit in Portugal. Um, and like the, uh, this is one waterway, so all of these are connected. Um, however, there's the danger that if you attack through a waterway, you will, you will, I think, always automatically lose a unit doing that, like a disembark penalty. So do watch out for that. Bring more units than you, bring one more unit than you want to attack with. Um, and you are also actually limited to um, to attacking with a maximum amount of six units of anything. So you could do six tanks and six infantry. Um, you know, why am I attacking here? Oh, uh, can I undo that? Yeah, I'm going to attack here. The reason why I want to attack here is because I get two infantry units here and I only get one over here. So I might as well take the better one. This is literally just a better ter territory. Um, you, uh, like I said, you're limited to attacking with a maximum of six units, and you have to leave at least one unit there. So you notice that I have five infantry here and one tank. One of my infantry units has to stay behind. All right, so let's let's show off some combat here to see how the combat goes. And the combat is also I kind of have a little bit of a problem with it, and you're gonna I, I hope see why I do. Um, so first thing you do is you select a unit to attack with, or rather a unit type. It says unit, but it means unit type. Do you want all of your inventory to attack, or do you want your tanks to attack? I'm going to start off... I kind of don't want to attack with my tank, because they'll probably just blow themselves up. Um, but I, I want to show how this goes. So here we go. So this is how tanks fight. First thing, like it's waiting for me to hit the assault button, but essentially what's going to happen is, is first it's going to take account to my up, upgrades. Uh, tanks have three automatic hits, so they're going to deal three damage, which is three just kills of infantry. That's nice and simple. Uh, but then these gears turn. Um, and the gears have a random chance of breaking, and the game nowhere explains what the chance of these things breaking is. So I have no idea whether I'm in good shape or bad shape. Um, I think I'm kind of in bad shape. I'm pretty sure this tank's just going to blow itself up. Um, but the way it works is that uh, if one of these gears breaks, it's going to deal half damage, rounded down. So that would be one point of damage. If two of these gears breaks, I think it deals no damage. And then if three or more break, it blows itself up and just deals damage to itself. All right, let's find out how this goes. So yeah, three, uh, the gears turn, and 
one broke, which means I'm going to do one point of damage. So it did not blow itself up. I don't know what the chances of it blowing itself up were there. I feel like the odds were not great. But yeah, we're just going to make do. So we took that territory from from him, and that's good and all. Inventory, infantry, by the way, work totally differently from tanks. Um, oh, uh, let's see. I can I can apparently still move. I shouldn't be able to move. I'm pretty sure that once you attack, you should not be able to move. Oh well, that's that's fine. We're just gonna end turn, because um, I don't want to move anything. You are limited to three invasions, um, three invasions slash attacks per turn. So I've taken three territories, so that means I cannot, I cannot attack anymore. So here's the point breakdown. Um, there's Magnifico, which is worth two points. Okay, that just went through there too quickly. Can we go back there? Nah, never mind. Um, but basically, you get two points for winning the that first round bid, for winning the bid, uh, uh, the first thing that happens in the round. You get another two points if you have the most of Da Vinci's designs activated, and they both split that because they both had one design activated. Um, and then just for territories and things like that. So I got one point because I am tied for most territories. Um, again, I don't particularly like like this one ignores a shield of um, uh, uh, of a castle, and this one, uh, what does the submarine do? Uh, defends coasts. It's very interesting, but I'm not really interested in that. I'm going to be mostly attacking over land, so I'm not really interested in these. So I'm going to lowball this. I have more important things to do with my Florence. I'm just gonna, I'm just going to let them, you know, do do their thing. Oh, I get the submarines basically for re, uh, for free. It cost me ten Florence, so you can quit the auction and you don't have to pay what you bid. You just take your stuff back, but you don't get the blueprint um, and I believe if you're the Magnifico if you won the bid you, if you retract your bid then you don't become the Magnifico so um, so you don't get anything you can quit the auction which I'm not sure if I like that mechanic either that you can quit the auction after you bid it means that you can like bid a ton of stuff and if it turns out that well I guess I didn't want to do that after all then you can just you know cancel it um, in my experience, the computer players are pretty conservative in when when they attack. Uh, they generally try not to attack. Of course, they're blocking me in there, so I'm going to attack them, um, which is fine. And in fact, I think I'm going to go take this castle here just because. Um, all right, so it's my turn. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I think I, I could use another tank. So I'm going to I'm going to build a tank. Yep, we're going to do that. Um, I should really be building shields as well. I'm not sure if I built a shield last round, but we're going to build a shield this round. Uh, yeah, I did. You can kind of see how many shields a, a castle has by... See, this is one shield, this is one shield. Again, it's not a very obvious iconography. It's another thing I'm not sure I really like about this game, is that the way the shields are represented on castles. But, you know, maybe I'm just nitpicking now. So we've got two troops over here. Um, oh, we should maybe also build another castle. I feel like building castles is kind of important. So, yeah, we're going to build a castle right here. And we have the Florence for it. Building a castle, you can only build tanks and planes. Oh, okay. Here's another thing that's just really weird. So remember, there can only be a total of 16 castles. You built number vents. Yeah, I'm not a number. That is a placeholder for a variable. It's supposed to say you have built castle like on like one, two, three, four. You've built the fourth castle on the map. It's supposed to say you built castle four. Um, so it's trying to alert you to there, but it just doesn't do that. It just says number. So that's an obvious mistake on their part. Again, there's a lot of this game that I just don't think is very polished. Um, all right, so we're going to invade over here. We're going to send our troop there. Send the one guy, and he's just going to claim that. For free which is fine and now let's now I'm gonna move these guys um, they're gonna move to Moskva Moscow I'm gonna send as many troops as I can and we're gonna go invade Bucharesti um, which is a castle and I'll be and I'll get to explain a little bit how how that works so we're gonna do that 
we're going to take as many as we can. Uh, which, again, you're limited to six troops. I do have seven troops here, and one of them has to remain behind, so I couldn't take more than six troops anyway. But there's an actual artificial limit of six. You cannot take more than that, which isn't really important early on. But later on, when you're sitting on armies of like nine or ten, then it becomes important because those armies can't be attacked. Um, the smart thing for me to do would be to use tanks first, but since I want to show off troops, I'm going to do troops. Um, so this is how troops go, is that I have six troops, which means I'm rolling six dice. And those dice, I have no idea what the odds are, the game doesn't tell you, but it can, it can roll one of three things. It can be a damage to them, a nothing, or a damage to me. These guys could, I could literally roll nothing but, um, blow myself up rolls and just kill my entire troop doing that, which... You know, that really sucks. Oh, also, this is important, is the way that sh uh, this castle has, I believe, two shields. Actually, I think this, maybe that's three shields. See, this is why I don't like the iconography. I think this castle actually might have three, sh three shields, which means that they're going to absorb three hits every time around. So I may not, I'm probably not going to be successful in, in taking this castle. All right, so what we got. So I killed one of my own guys, and I got two hits, which I don't think do anything. Yeah, that, so you notice that they were just absorbed by the shield. Um, so now it's the tank's turn, and I don't think they're going to do a whole lot either, because they're just going to do three damage, which I think is all going to get absorbed by the shield. I think I literally can't take this, um, which, you know, that's that's fine. I got to show off what I wanted to show off. See, now two of these broke, which, oh, two of them broke. I killed one of my own tanks. Yep. And now here goes the second tank. Tanks go in, in different order. Like each one of these is one tank. So they did it. But again, three shields, nothing, nothing happened. So now they get to counterattack, which I, oh, they have automatons. I forgot about that. So that was the automaton attack. And now the infantry, which worked the exact same way. Yeah, they ended up killing. Yeah, they ended up dealing more damage to themselves than I did to them. And I think that is by far like the biggest problem uh, with this game is the sort of the combat how it works is that notice that everything I did didn't do a dang thing to this guy to this guy um, like I, I literally couldn't hurt them uh, my infantry have a chance of hurting him but they need to like roll all damages because he's got three shield yeah my infantry <sighs> infantry suck so much that they end up killing themselves more often than um yeah, it says I have no way of overcoming the enemy defenses, except that was already true. Um, and I, he still just killed themselves in the counterattack, which, you know, that's really dumb, I think. Um, so in any case, I feel like this I've shown enough of how this game goes. You kind of get the idea. Um, if somebody really wants me to play through an entire game with this, I totally will. Um, but uh, essentially, the game the game is not about conquering your opponents it's about victory points and that is the one thing i do like about this game is that you can win the game in very sort of sneaky ways you can go for a strategy and there's multiple strategies you can go with like you can perfect your cities and turtle up and even if you have just like f uh, five or six territories and you're horribly behind in territories like, if you get pigeonholed into a corner of the map and can't really do anything, you can still win by just funneling tons of Florence into the up, uh, upgrade of your cities. And because of how difficult the castles are to to uh, take, you they might not even be able to do anything to you. Uh, they might not be able to take your territories, uh, which is you know, both a good thing and a bad thing. Um, so I do like that there's multiple ways to win. Um and now for the bad things. So the bad thing is, one, I really don't like the combat. Uh, infantry in general, uh, uh, before before you get upgrades, most of your units are kind of useless. Like tanks tend to break down and blow up. Infantry tend to kill themselves more than anything else. Um, maybe I should be going more for planes, but I feel like planes have the same kinds of problems. They tend to blow themselves up as well. Um and yeah so the combat i'm not a huge fan of and then there's just a lack of variety 
um, all the different maps you can play are just very are just a different layout of these territories. Like you might have different waterways and what have you, but there's nothing else to keep the game interesting. Um, so you know, it, it can be a fun little diversion. I don't want to be too harsh on the game, um, but I feel like the the game does have a lot of flaws in it. I don't like the the schizophrenic art style. Like if you look at this. I don't know if you can see this too well, but if you look at the submarine guy, it looks very cartoonish, and a lot of it is very cartoonish, but then you have, like, this sort of very serious, like, this is not a cartoonish map, for instance. I feel like the castle is not cartoonish, or the infantry, the way they look here is not cartoonish. It looks to be a little bit more serious. Uh, and that, you know, just the picture of Leonardo da Vinci that keeps floating around, he's very serious looking. So I don't like the art direction of the game um, that and just a couple of baffling omissions like that you can't play multiplayer um, so I think overall this is I would not recommend this game um, but you know like I said I got this game as part of a humble bundle um, and you know I have spent a couple of hours on it now so you know for the for the two dollars the less than two dollars are spent on it you know I guess you know why not you know, definitely not the end of the world. Um, and maybe, who knows, maybe they'll fix some of the problems with this game in the future. Uh, I looked at their Steam page and there's nothing there, so I'm not sure if they will. I'm not sure if they care about this game either. Um, so, yep, that's my review of Magnifico. Um, I hope I've given you an idea of what this game is like. And to see if it's for you. I mean, don't like just because I don't like it, uh, I hope that I've shown you enough of the game that you can kind of make up your own decision. Um, and that you can make up your own mind about the game. So just because I doesn't like it, uh, don't like it, uh, doesn't mean that you you should absolutely not get it. Um, you know, uh, make up your own mind. You know, uh, if if this is if you really like Magnifico, the normal board game, maybe like I'm assuming this is pretty close to what the actual board game is, and this gives you a chance to play that game with computer players. So if you like want to practice and get and you know be able to beat your friends eventually, you know, want to get some practice in before a game night uh, of your favorite game, Magnifico. You know, I've, this is this by no means means the board game is bad. I just don't like this particular digital adaptation. So, you know, there are reasons to get it. Um, but with that said, I've been Gamer Vince, and this has been my review of Magnifico. Uh, I hope you stay tuned for more reviews.